Hello and welcome to another edition of the program. I'm Victor Mathias. Now, financing is one key area that startups and businesses seek and need to ensure that their ideas bridge the gap created by existing problems in the society. But financing is not just all that is needed for a startup or business to thrive. Other factors like mentoring, opportunities through networking and the likes also play a key role. So today on the program, we'll be joined by the director of the U.S. Trade and Development Agency, Ms. Eno Ebong. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the program. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. But tell us a little bit about your agency and what your mission is during this visit. Oh, I'd be happy to. So the U.S. Trade and Development Agency uh, really works alongside the U.S. industry to help to prepare projects that will um, really make sure that a sound, high-quality infrastructure uh, ecosystem is developed in our partner countries. Uh, we work in, emer in emerging markets and we uh, focus uh, in, I'll talk about Nigeria in particular, in the clean energy, ICT and healthcare infrastructure uh, sectors. And we're working with the public and private sectors in the countries that we are in. Uh, we have a long-standing portfolio in Nigeria, actually. I have been working here for about 30 years, which goes back to our inception. Uh, and so we have about 70 uh, active uh, projects that we've developed up to this point. And our ongoing portfolio, our current portfolio, uh, is designed to unlock $5 billion of financing, approximately. I mentioned financing because it's key to obviously implementing infrastructure projects and that's a huge part of what we do. So we provide grant-based project preparation assistance, feasibility studies, technical assistance, pilot projects, uh, and these grants really help to unlock financing. Uh, so that's our goal, that's our mission. Uh, I'm here in Nigeria this visit to do three things. One is to uh, celebrate, we, we yesterday um, uh, uh, celebrated the grants with three hospitals, so hoping to increase access uh, to really good health care. Uh, so the other is uh, to connect with our partners. Uh, it's been a while since we've been able to meet partners in person, so that's a very important goal. I've also been assessing the impact and the progress of our portfolio. Uh, and then finally, I guess that was more than three, but finally, and it's really important to further our engagement uh, in support of the development of Nigerian infrastructure. Now, $5 billion is quite a lot, but what part of that will be going to the Nigerian tech ecosystem? So I think that it's uh, at this point hard to, to kind of itemize in dollar amounts, but we really want to keep flexible. So the idea is the projects that we are preparing, the grant funds that we are providing, um, we design to unlock that, that amount of financing in the future when we implement um, joining our grantees um, with financiers. As, as that is something that we do. We want to make sure that the ecosystem uh, is present to implement these projects. So um, we, we provide grant funds. For example, yesterday we dispersed in total $3 million to those three hospitals um, so that then it can catalyze financing to be determined in the future. So when I reference the five billion, we believe that the ongoing portfolio, the current portfolio can unleash or unlock uh, five billion dollars in, in financing. And then it will, as that comes online, um, you know, it will be up to those project sponsors uh, to get the, the correct amount of financing for their projects. Yes. Yeah, so, so what's the time frame? Now, like how soon will this uh, $5 billion be available? Uh, so it's really uh, a case by case basis in terms of where the projects are and, you know, the, 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 the need uh, that arises. I can give an example of a project that we've um, uh, 
worked on uh, that is already uh, coming online. Uh, and it, it's a project with a, 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 a private company, and I, I mentioned we worked a lot with the private um, sector. Uh, and this company, you know, we were looking to extend uh, the reach of uh, their customers and, pe and build their access. Um, and, you know, uh, they're, they're looking to do it in 110 communities already. 24 communities the ability to gain access has been proven so and and put online so there's an example um, but it really depends on each project projects are very project specific in a sense and so it does take time we're in the early project planning parts um, but it it you know it can come as quickly as a couple of years uh, to maybe uh, longer than that um, director, um, a sister agency in the United States, that's the NTIA, also runs a, a program called the BTOP, you know, where they give grants to companies to ensure that, you know, they, they take broadband internet to underserved communities. Um, is this $5 billion also part of uh, a similar scheme or it's uh, a scheme on its own? That, that, that is very, it sounds very uh, consistent with how we work, where we find a, a project sponsor, uh, someone who can implement the project, and the companies we're working with are, tend to be private sector. For example, yesterday in Abuja, I visited with Hotspot, who are looking at, and we're supporting them in a feasibility study, to come up with a rural telephony solution. And they're going to use open RAN um, architecture to do that. It's a little unproven. We're, we're going to work with them to test the feasibility of it. Um, and so there's an example of how you know, that increase of access can occur. We're working, and I visited this morning actually, um, I, IPNX to look at how they can accelerate expansion of their network. Uh, and then you know you'll uh, be hearing from EchoVault uh, looking to expand access in the Niger Delta region, and we're supporting a feasibility study to do that. So, so there is consistency there. We want to increase access, um, and we want to do so in a way that brings U.S. technology, goods, services, expertise, um, in combination and in partnership with the projects sponsors to be able to get to that next point of attracting financing. Uh, very well then. Uh, so I, I'm very sure that those listening would, you know, want to know what steps they should take, you know, um, so that they can benefit, you know, from those funds because $5 billion is quite a lot. And of course, I know there are so many entrepreneurs that will be looking forward, you know, to um, apply for these grants. So what exactly, what steps should they be taking? Yeah, no, absolutely. So we're very demand driven, both in terms of our partners and the needs that they see, and also US industry. And so we want for people to know about us, to, to come to us. Um, the best way to do it, actually, we have a very, very clear and good website that actually will connect you to the right regions because we operate in emerging markets all over the world. So I would encourage people to come to www.ustda.gov. Um, you will be able to connect with us that way. We have an office here in Nigeria, uh, and so we'll be able to channel you and connect you to the right people. Um, I would also say to follow me. I have a Twitter presence, uh, and that is at USTDA underscore director, where I do try to, we, we want to be very transparent about what we're doing, so I do um, talk about the various initiatives and visits and work that we are doing uh, from time to time. Indeed. Now, so you've been pretty much uh, busy moving around since your arrival, including, you know, meeting with some ladies in the tech ecosystem and also um, visiting Microsoft's Africa Development Center. Let's start with the center. What development would you say caught your fancy there? It was really tremendous to be here. I, I was very impressed by, first of all, the concept of having a space here in Nigeria where innovators, creators, people who want to adapt can come and do so, not only adapting to the needs of the market here, but with the concept of being able to 
project and promote these adaptations, these innovations um, beyond. Uh, the, the, the motto that they go by is local ideas for global impact and I think it is spot on. So understanding that, understanding the environment that has been created here to encourage and to generate that was really instructive and uh, informative and uh, just going up to the garage there and seeing um, all of the uh, equipment, the things that will make it possible for people to create, including having access to engineers, to Microsoft engineers, um, I think is, is very, very encouraging and wonderful to see. Uh, most of all, that, that, that notion of Africa as a place of innovation, which I often talk about actually back in the US, um, because I talk about uh, African countries in particular as very natural partners for us, because we both have that sense of innovation, adaptation, creativity, leveraging opportunity. And to see that very much uh, embraced here and focused on sending it out as well, uh, it was a really great experience. Indeed, hopefully the next big thing comes out of that center soon. But uh, what does the USTDA have for the growing women in STEM and ICT, you know, as well uh, in, in the country? So I actually, it's a really great question. And first I want to say how impressed I have been with the presence of women leading uh, the work in this field. In IPNX this morning, the, 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 the leadership was female uh, predominantly. Uh, and I've seen it again and again here in Nigeria in the short span of my visit. So I, I want to say that is very, very encouraging and impressive to see. Um, our government, uh, the president launched in conjunction with the G7 leaders an initiative called the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment. And this is dedicated to really providing and, and standing up game-changing infrastructure projects in climate, in digital, in healthcare. But the fourth cone of that is to make sure that it's done with a view to gender equality and gender equity. And so that notion, it's a really important question that you ask. And as a government, we are absolutely behind it and in the agency level, working to achieve it. So at USTDA, we actually um, uh, brought on a consultant, actually before the PGII initiative was launched, to help us to look at infrastructure through a gender lens and make sure that we are standing up projects and working with partners in a way that promotes that. I am very proud of the women-led projects that we are supporting. An example is uh, Soce Energy, uh, which is uh, a women-led uh, entity group that is looking to increase access to clean, reliable energy in the north central states of Nigeria. We look for those opportunities. We have several you know, women-led projects all over the world, and we will continue to do so. Uh, very, very pleased that our government, the Biden administration, has put an emphasis in that in the context of infrastructure. We can't wait for it to happen. But lastly, how does it feel to be back home? Well, just I would like to say again how absolutely wonderful it's to, it is to be back in Nigeria as the director of USTDA and to see the engagement of our partners um, and partners to come in making a difference and in applying all of their skills, knowledge, creativity, of which there is so much to making a difference to Nigerians. And USTDA is proud to be part of that and looking forward to doing more in that regard. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Director, for your time on the show today. And we will be looking forward to the disbursement of the funds to Nigerian companies soon. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Now, still to come on the program, we will be joined by an entrepreneur already benefiting from the U.S. Trade and Development Agency. That's in a moment. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. We are now joined by the Managing Director of EcoVolt, Emeka Ebo. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the show today. Thanks for having me. But Emeka, kicks out this conversation for us by telling us how you became a beneficiary 
of a grant from the USTDA. Yes, the USTDA and EcoVault got to meet through Microsoft, the Microsoft Airband team. Airband is an ecosystem of enabling internet connectivity providers around the world. All right, so what sector are you playing in? And, um, you know, to what extent would you say you have achieved the aim for which the grant you were given by the USTDA has been achieved? Right. Um, we'll take our responsibility and our role in this into parts. The TDA partnership engages us to build more affordable connectivity, specifically in the Niger Delta region. Uh, EcoVolt is five and a half years old and has been providing affordable connectivity here in Lagos. Uh, we're three months into it. Um, started out in July and we've at this point we've launched in five uh, sites, five stations that are capable of serving as many as 25,000 users today. Well, the Niger Delta, some would say, is you know quite tricky or you know pretty much has a lot of um, danger here and there, you know. But um, three months down the line, uh, and I'm glad you you're making headway. But um, what challenges have you faced so far? Oh, certainly there is. So the challenge is getting the sites up and running, and that has been the challenge. In in fact, the the project has been delayed a couple of months because of that. Uh, the biggest challenge is getting fiber to the site, getting the bandwidth needed to the site from our Lagos uh, pop uh, to each one of those five locations in Port Harcourt. And also uh, power. Uh, none of the sites are connected to the power mains, so we have to get in there and uh, put together the power station to, to enable all the equipment run 24-7. Well, some, some will say Niger Delta is quite tricky, you know, but three months down the line, uh, I'm glad you're making a headway, especially, you know, doing what you're doing. But uh, what has been your challenge so far? It, it's not free. It certainly comes at a cost. And what we do is make things more affordable, not free, right? So we take a look at the economics, the demographics, areas we go to, to begin with, usually don't have as much connectivity internet, right? So we go in there, we bring it in there at a cost that actually more than what we have here in Lagos. So it comes at a cost, but we're very uh, 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 cognizant of the fact that affordability needs to, be, needs to be very feasible for those who are in those areas to, to take up our services. Well, hopefully that is sorted out soon, but uh, it is said that there isn't free lunch even in Freetown. So at what cost is this service coming? Uh, good question. Um, however, there are two ways to look at it. One is the space where you bring in cable landing internationally is different from what we do. We are a last mile connectivity provider. Uh, the Google landing has to do with you bringing in internet internationally into the country. So what we, as a last mile provider, we connect the end user who gets to utilize the internet connection. We actually subscribe to the Google uh, Aquarian landing or, or like submarine cable landings. Uh, what we do differently is, is very basic, right? We, we're enablers in a, in a community. We see ourselves as enablers in a digital community where we deliver connectivity and we enable uh, our enterprise focus. Most of our customers are small enterprises and we enable them do more online. So it's not just getting them connectivity, but enabling their systems or the applications needed to run their businesses be more available online to their suppliers, their partners, and also their customers. Well, clearly, uh, Mameka, there are many players in this space you're playing in. So some are even bigger than you. But how are you able to keep your head um, above water? Or how are you, what keeps you going, pretty much? Just one thing. Um, we certainly have been fortunate to get that partnership together with the USCDA and with Microsoft and in enabling us to do more. Now we get into a place where we have to reach that, reach certain milestones and build more. And in that, in that stead, we're looking to do multiple things and engage the public and see how users can connect to our network and speak more about us. And lastly, what would you give, um, what advice would you give entrepreneurs watching and hoping that they would someday 
land this uh, grant that you landed you know, from the USDDA? My advice is keep trying, right? Um, we've always had several cases of applications going in and, and opportunities that we missed quite all right. And that never let us down to put our heads down and stop. I mean, so you just have to keep going. And that's, uh, that's where you get where you want to go. Emeka Ibo, thanks for joining us and you know, sharing your thoughts on this. And I wish you the best and also hope that you continue um, to ensure that communities actually you know, get this uh, internet, especially the underserved communities. Thank you once again for joining us on the show. Thank you, Victor. Let's now take a look at the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Spokesperson of the APC presidential campaign, Festus Kayamo, explaining the $460,000 deducted from 10 accounts linked to the presidential candidate of the APC kicks off this week's chart in so, fifth place. As I speak with you, if you want to know whether there is a criminal charge against somebody, you must have a complainant. So you will see the state versus so so and so person. You must see that. And then you must have a charge number. You must have a charge number if there's a charge against anybody. There is no charge number in those documents. The documents also reflect the titles of plaintiff and defendants. A criminal process does not bear the title plaintiff. It is followed by another video related to the APC's presidential candidate, Bola Tinubu, where a PDP presidential spokesperson says Mr. Tinubu may be disqualified from contesting the election next year. Bola may be disqualified from contesting. By who? No, if the matter goes to court, interpreting that provision of the Constitution, because the finding in that civil provincial proceedings has ended against him, that's why he forfeited that. In third place, another presidential candidate related video, this time that of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, who takes his campaign to Benway State, where he vowed to restore peace. Benway State, I assure you, we will secure and bring peace to Benway State. Away from politics is the Chief of Defence Staff General Loki Rabo warning that the security apparatus will resist any attempt to use violence against the state. What we are against is having to use the instrument of violence to bring about your institutions. Um, we have a constitution and the constitution enables us to be able to ventilate all of our grievances that we have. So anyone going outside the provisions of the constitution, of course, we won't as a military and of course security agencies allow that. And in first place and back to politics is Dino Melaye maintaining that aggrieved G5 PDP governors will in the end work for his party come the 2023 general elections. I would not want anybody to inch their complaint mm -hmm. because Ayu is not Article song that he will say go and sit down. Uh, let me, let me. So, so for you to now ask Article to take Panadol for another person's headache shows an insincerity of purpose of heart and commitment. Yeah, but that, above that, all, that, above that, all, yeah. I want to tell you that by the grace of God, at the end of the day, we may not get everybody together. We may, we cannot even get everybody together. But I want to tell you, even some of these governors are still going to work for their party. That's the show today. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Victor Mathias. Bye for now.